your favorite influencer is lying to you. They tell you the path to software developer job starts with one word, Python. You spend months learning, you follow the tutorials, maybe you even buy a course only to later look at the real job descriptions and feel completely underqualified. If that's you, I need you to know, it's not your fault. You've been sold one single step of the journey that is not even necessarily yours, as if it were the whole roadmap. The truth is, selling a developer Python course is a great business, but it's a broken career path for the beginners. So in this video we are cutting through the hype. I will show you the hard data, why the Python first approach is a trap and what you should actually be learning to get you hard this year. The influencers aren't wrong saying that the Python is very easy to learn. It's also very easy to teach, which makes it a great business. But there is a huge danger for the beginners because that's only one single step in the whole journey to the software development job. And no influencer is caring about whether you will secure a job or no at the end. Because they didn't promise that to you. They only said that you will learn Python by the end of this course. And of course, at the beginning, they will use their chance to show you all the nice huge salaries in the field. Just very gently implying that you maybe will have that salary one day. Which their course will not give you 100%. I've googled the most popular Python courses available on YouTube. And the first one is actually giving you some roadmap. They do emphasize that you should build a project and prepare for an interviews. But they are not saying how competitive the job market is. And they are not saying that there are just no available positions for Python backend developer. And no need to say Daniel has a courses for a price of $270, which he ultimately wants to sell to you. The same goes with the TechWit team, which has a paid membership, programming with Mosh, which is saying that the Python is the top programming language because he has a $150 course. Or an internet made coder is selling you the Python just because he has a $300 bootcamp. No of them ever says to go and check how many open positions there are. And even if you take a look at the research, most of the articles say that the Python is number one top choice. Like I got this in Google in a Geek for Geeks, Pluralsight, Test, Dev Lab, they all say the same thing. And they all say that the Python has unmatched versatility. So let's speak about why this is not true, why they are wrong, and why Python is a bad choice. Well, yes, Python does have unmatched versatility, and that's versatility trap. Because Python is good for scripting, automation, it has powerful libraries in IE data models and data science, so it's very widely used, and that's true. The problem is, it's only 10% of the iceberg. You will have to learn different things to become data scientist, different things to become automation engineer, and different things to become IE engineer. No, not to mention DevOps or Python backend development. So only if you combine all those things, Python becomes number one. But if you go and check how many available positions there are for each of those roles, there are not so many, especially if you compare it to some normal developer roles. So here is what you should do if you are just starting your journey. First step would be to pick your platform where you want to apply for the job listings once you're ready. I will use LinkedIn just as an example, and I will even create an empty user profile so that my Java profile doesn't affect the search results. Then you should pick your preferred area where you will look for the job. I picked US, Australia, Germany, Poland, and also UK just because people watch me from those countries. And then obviously you just go and check how many open positions there are. Don't forget to select entry level or internship roles and then filter out and just count down the results. The next step, very crucial one, is don't just count the number but check the quality of the positions. Because if you write down the Python developer, you will see many full stack developer roles, you will also see DevOps, IE engineer, so many different qualifications that are not for example Python developers. So in fact out of 10 positions only few are backend developer positions. And the last step, if you manage to find dev role for the Python, check the list of the technologies. There is a huge chance that the Python will be just a secondary language to, for example, Java or JavaScript. And, I, and even if it is primary language, you will see so many other technologies that you have to master, which are not necessarily so easy as a Python. So here's my research. This is what I've done. I've also selected Java roles, JavaScript. I've added C and Swift just because many articles mention them as a popular languages. And I also made some notes where I see that the quality of the vacations is not so good. But even without counting out the not relevant vacations, the Python is still not the top choice. This graph was generated by Jim and I based on this research. And you can see that the Python is not even the second place. Even the market for the Java developers is bigger than for the Python developers. 
Python has like 60% of the market, whereas Java plus JavaScript own the half of the market. So it's like more than three times fewer opportunities for the Python than for any other language. Not to mention that the salaries for Python developers are a bit lower. But please don't trust me, don't trust that research, go and make your own. Because the market can change or the situation in your preferred area can also change. And I really wish that it would be different in your case, but I really doubt it just because the way how influencers are affecting the market, it's gonna stay broken and maybe even more broken. And that's the problem with the Python, because, because nobody is saying that. An entry level data analyst does need to know the Python, but he also needs to know another stuff, like SQL databases solid understanding of statistics and data implementation, or an entry-level machine learning engineer. He does need to know Python, but it's merely even a starting point for the position. What about the TensorFlow? What about the PyTorch? What about all the mathematics like linear algebra, calculus probability, and just the whole life cycle of building a models? Or for the DevOps, well, of course you need to know how to use Python for the scripting but the core of the job involves the knowledge of the cloud platforms like AWS, Azure or Google Cloud. Not to mention stuff like Docker or CI-CD like Jenkins. And people are neglecting that very important aspect. In the same Pluralsight blog, there is an article saying that Python is not so good as expected. They say that just knowing Python won't cut it, they say that entry-level software developer jobs are harder to find. And they do admit that AI is already changing the field by substituting the junior developers. But because the most read articles are about Python and top read languages, they just have to play the game. So please analyze the market first. The whole educational system is now producing Python generalists. While the professional job market needs Python specialists focused on one single thing. And lastly, you will be so imposter syndrome prone if you become Python developer. Because, come on, nobody takes Python developers seriously. If you want to look like a 10x programmer, developer, IT nerd, genius, that's not how the Python developers are seen. Of course, I'm joking, but there is a truth in that too. So here's my call to action to you. If you want to learn Python, don't just learn Python. First, decide what you want to do. Do you want to become web developer, data scientist, a engineer and learn the entire stack from day one. Never focus only on Python. Or just forget about Python, because you can see that the market situation for the Python is very, very strange. Why not pick different language? You can see that for the JavaScript, there are many available positions and most of them are actually good quality. So if you like to see the results of your work and all the colors changing, you can go for the front end. Or if you like me, like in the logic, you can go for the Java as a backend. This path is so clear and has so many open positions at the job market. Do the research yourself and let me know in the comments what are the results. I hope this video helps you and if it is, maybe you will find this or this one interesting as well. And finally, please choose your path, take your step and get paid.